Hey guys, so I'm going to continue on my series of why the pros play. And in this case, it's why the pros play Tyrael. Now, most people are going to go, oh, well, it makes, I mean, it makes sense why everyone plays Tyrael. He has sanctification. He's so good, as well as holy ground is great. And yes, well, sanctification, a very good sanctification can be the difference in any team fight. Um, and a holy ground could steal camps away from the enemies. I want to show you that he's actually picked for so much more than these two abilities. And if you limit him to just these two abilities, you're not getting the value of who Tyrael actually is. So, in this particular game that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you another style of play. Well, Sanctification is still picked up. Um, he gets to be played a little bit differently than you might think. So, how do you draft Tyrael? Who do you pick him into? The first thing is, oftentimes I make a joke that you can pick Tyrael into any team comp that has a healer. And it's a joke because he can be a main tank as long as you get this armor talent right here. Uh, he can be an off tank, usually if you get this slow talent right here. Um, but sometimes the armor is still picked up if your main tank has a lot of uh, a lot of CC and initiate and all that. He has a little bit of wave clear if you combine um, righteousness exploding along with something like law and order that allows you to get your righteousness off cooldown faster. As well as maybe burning halo which gives you even more wave clear. Um, there's a variety of different tools that he has and he can be... He could fit into a lot of different spaces. But what I find is best with Tyrael is to fit a lot of the areas that your team is missing, mixed with playing him into teams that fill the areas that he's missing. For example, Tyrael has no major engagement. Meaning, if he was to try to jump into a fight, say an enemy gets out of position, the best he can do is jump behind him and try to body block for a bit. And that's it. That's all he can do. That's not a great initiation, which means that drafting Tyrael as a main tank with a team comp that has no initiation, you're going to have a really bad time. But at the same time, drafting Tyrael into, say, I don't know, a Stukov who's going to land a root, I mean, you're going to have a bad time until level 13. Maybe a Malfurion who has a movement speed and can uh, root at, at lower levels, then Tyrael has a better chance of actually winning the fight. Um, which makes him a difficult main tank, but he's very powerful as an off tank, as let's say you're with Garrosh, you can increase Garrosh's movement speed with your E, which will then allow Garrosh to walk up really quickly and throw someone. So, making sure that you have someone that can fill Tyrael's deficits makes him very powerful, but the other reason why he's strong is because he can fill other people's deficits, like Garrosh's low movement speed, or other characters that have no escape. Um, for example, Gul'dan is a very powerful mage, but he has no escape. Well, Tyrael can quickly give him movement speed and a shield, which is usually enough to get him away. Which makes Tyrael a very powerful tank for peeling. At the same time, as he's a decent tank for engaging, as long as you have other people to engage with you. Finally, what I find strange is that in North America, Tyrael's not being picked that much. However, in Korea, in Europe, and as well as uh, China, in this particular game I'm going to be showing you is a Chinese HGC game, um, Tyrael is actually picked quite a bit to enable dive comps. And what a dive comp is, is it's a composition based off of heroes that all thrive in diving into the enemy team. And he enables these by allowing the whole team to dive in with him, giving them shields, as well as giving them movement speed, attack speed, um, and whatever else they need, so that they can all jump in and have just this powerful fight. Not to mention that he can jump in and immediately sanctification, giving them a fight in the middle of the enemy team, all while invulnerable. This makes Tyrael a very, very powerful tool while diving, not just that, but he can fill a lot of deficits in the team. So, in this particular game, um, and I want to thank uh, MasterLeague.net for giving all of these statistics on his builds, as well as these pro games. In this particular game, it's going to be Sunny Lion versus RPG, two very strong Chinese teams. And the builds that I recommend on Tyrael is always get Justice for All at level 1. It gives a large shield to your team. Level 4 Stalwart Angel is great for off tank or main tank, but if you feel like you have a really strong main tank, the slow that you can get from Bound by Law is okay. 
Level 7, Swift Retribution and Reciprocate are both good. I find if you're going to be getting Holy Ground at 13, which is map specific and I'll explain the maps that it's good at, you should be getting Swift Retribution. If you feel that you're going to be getting Reciprocate, you want to get Law and Order, which allows you to get more shields off, which is more damage, which means that, again, more damage. And then level 16, usually you're going to want to go with the lowering cooldown of your Q, especially if you've got Holy Grounds, so you can get more Holy Grounds, or if you got the Slow. If you happen to not get Holy Ground or the Slow, I recommend trying Burning Halo as it gives you more Wave Clear, unless you're really high on Wave Clear. Level 20, um, both Defense of the Angels um, as well as Holy Arena have their benefits, so it really depends on which one you prefer to do. Now, I'm going to get into this game. Before I get into this game, I want to share two things. The first thing is, um, and I'll, I'll play the game in the beginning while I'm talking about this. So the first thing that I want to share with everyone is the Discord channel that I have created um, is not just for my channel. I want this Discord to be kind of a friendly and positive place for everyone that wants to see it. You can find the Discord channel in the description below. Now, the reason that I mention this is because I found that there's a lot of negativity going around in the subreddit as well as the forums, and I find that's just a vocal minority. Most people are playing this game and enjoying this game, and I want a place where people that are enjoying this game and who love this game and just want to learn can can chat with other people that have the same mentality. So if you'd like a positive place to play games with friends, check the Discord out below. The next thing that I want to ask everyone is, would it be okay if I did some sponsorships? Now, I've been asked a few by, by a few people if I could talk about their product or do whatever, and I always felt that that was a little iffy because I'm just here to give you Heroes of the Storm content. But at the same time, I want to keep these high quality, and I and honestly, I want to improve the quality. But... A little bit of incentive wouldn't hurt. So my question is, would you guys mind if in the future for some of the longer videos for me to take one minute out of it to talk about a specific sponsor? I'll make sure that it's products that I've tested myself or products that I've heard enough about from my fans that would actually be worth it for everyone here. Nothing where I just grab a random product off the internet and go, buy this chair. No, I'm only going to recommend things that I personally would actually recommend. If you guys are okay with that, um, toss in the comments below. I, I Again, I, I like making content for everyone, but sometimes it can be a little time-consuming. People don't realize how much time goes into it. Putting all that aside, two minutes out of the way, um, I do want to get into this and explain a little bit of what's happening. He's anchoring in the bushes, making sure that he has vision. The enemies he does not have vision on, um, just barely, only a couple of them. Two top, one mid, one here. So he knows that he can get down here. He doesn't have a lot of wave clear, so he's going to simply just be soaking, giving shields to his allies so that his ally minions can push forward and do some damage to this without him needing to actually push or play it unsafe. And if the enemy happened to get um, something that he can stack on him, this allows him to push without having the, the enemy be able to stack. A lot of what Tyrael needs to be doing in the beginning is focusing on, fo um, on soaking, as well as trying to enable kills for his team by giving movement speed to his allies by using smite on the ground. Um, he also wants to be saving his team by using righteousness to give them shields. And I'm going to zoom up just a little bit until we get to the first objective so I can explain how you need to play as Tyrael in the first objective. So as you can see, he can stay really close to the enemies because he always has shields on himself, as well as he always has Qs outward. So he can usually stay pretty close to the enemies. He's anchoring a bush to give vision to his team in case someone got close over here. You could have Maev jump in and they could get a kill. So Tyrael is a lot of... Instead of joining your team and pushing with a lot of things, Tyrael's much more of using his utility and only using his abilities when he needs to. They gave him a patch recently that made his mana costs a little bit more friendly, but they're still nowhere near um, being able to just spam your abilities. So instead, making sure that you're using your mana effectively, as well as just anchoring in bushes, is much more valuable than joining your team in fights. So we've got the first objective spawning up here. Tyrael, unlike some of the other heroes that I've done recently, needs to always stay with his team. Um, you can see some heroes like Sonya, who can focus on the objective, or Junkrat, who can quickly clear a wave and then jump to another wave so that he can dual soak. Um, Tyrael needs to stay with his team nearly at all times. And he can effectively add to dive comps, but you don't want to be diving into a 3v5. So instead, what he's doing is simply clearing waves, as well as giving shields to Maiev so that she can deal damage safely. You can see he's not wasting his mana with his other abilities. He's saving them for when he actually needs them. 
He uses his Q to have an escape. So he'll toss his Q into a bush, and then he'll walk up to the, the fight so that he can deal a lot of damage. And if he ever gets in a really iffy spot, he can always just jump away, as you saw. And now, um, so he's going to get this, and they're ready to kind of fight to get this last little bit, as Sonya's been getting this the entire time. If you've seen the Sonya video, you see that she's doing exactly what she should be doing by grabbing the objective while their team is simply just delaying the enemies. His E doesn't do a lot of damage, so while he did use it on the tank there, I highly wouldn't have recommended doing that just because it didn't get a lot of value. In a case like this, there's a really strong thing that Tyrael can do by destroying a sidewall and pushing forward while throwing a Q backwards. He can uh, harass the enemies when the Punisher jumps over and possibly even get a kill. And then he has his Q to leave safely. So we'll see if he ends up doing that, but I don't know if he does. You can also Q ahead. Remember, this is to a great dive comp. The problem is you don't really want to dive that far um, because... You don't. You wouldn't have an escape, and it's into a four-man while your team is already leaving. So ultimately, you don't want to dive too much. But the reason that this is considered a dive comp is because you have Junkrat, who can reposition by using his W. You have Maiev, you have Tyrael, you have Sonya, who are all great dive heroes. Followed by Alexstrasza, who can follow you with her ultimate ability and keep you healed with her ultimate ability. She can also use her dragon form before she ultimates and dive in as a dragon. So we're going to skip past this and show up to the next objective. There's little fights in here, and the great part about Tyrael is how he can keep his team alive. He can stay safe by stalling the enemies as well as just jumping away when he needs to. One thing that I will like to share a little bit is people don't think that Tyrael does a lot of damage, and while visually it doesn't look like he's doing a lot of damage now, I want to show how a couple of his talents start adding up. Um, particularly the Reciprocate, uh, Reciprocate? Reciprocate, either way. Um, where his shield will explode after it is destroyed or after it times out. Combine that with a level 13 talent law and order instead of holy ground. Holy ground is picked up in a lot of cases on pro matches because it allows you to safely take camps without worry of the enemy stealing it, as well as safely steal camps as because you can just simply holy ground and push them out of the way. However, remember that Tyrael not only can fill areas that his team lacks, but he can also have people fill areas that he lacks. He is currently a main tank, which doesn't have an engage, but Maiev has an engage with her W. He doesn't pick Holy Ground because Junkrat has his W to knock everyone out of, um, out of camps. So Tyrael can now play a different role. He can play a role that allows more shields and more damage because his team can fill the gaps that he doesn't have. Um, he's simply anchoring in a bush, which allows him to have vision when his team decided, or when the enemy team decided to move in. He's not as powerful as an anchor as uh, many other heroes like a Garrosh or a Diablo, because a Garrosh or Diablo can lead to a kill. But just anchoring for vision alone is still a very powerful tool, especially in pro play. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. They hit level 10 first, so they should be trying to make a play of some sort. We've got Sonya, who's doing a camp up here. Zeratul saw her. Uh, Junkrat came down to help her out. They're going to go for this camp right here because they're level 10 first. Now remember we have uh, Junkrat bomb, but he's not quite there yet. So they need to be a little careful about this. The enemies didn't even realize it. So I think Hanzo saw it, but they knew that they couldn't fight back because all Tyrael has to do. And that's another thing too about Holy Ground is um, if you have Sanctification, sometimes it's better to just Sank instead of actually Holy Grounding. You can see just simple simple fights. Every fight that he does, they don't decide to dive in. He simply just does a W and gets his team out. In this case, we have a big fight that's going on. So he's going to Sanctification so that his Maiev could stay alive. Everything's going to be pushed back in. So he's going to get as much damage off as possible. Uh, we'll likely have Alexstrasza use her ult and then heal while Tyrael's doing damage. But they may be lacking the damage right now. So it might not lead to any kills, especially with the Tranquility going out. So we'll have some trait value probably, maybe no kill from it, but at least some damage. And because this is simply a Tyrael-focused thing, I'm just going to fast forward until Tyrael's back in the fight. 
So we can see right here, Tyrael decides to stay mounted instead of using his Q to jump in. He uses his Q downwards so that he could simply auto attack and still jump if he needs to. He gets all of his abilities off, making sure that his team is full health. As you can see, his team is still very healthy. I don't know if we can track his shield damage, but he's already shielded 3,000. That's pretty solid if you think about it, and his damage is starting to catch up with some of the other heroes, as he's doing as much damage as Junkrat's doing, and he's doing more hero damage than Sonya's doing. So you can see that it starts adding up quite a bit in these team fights, where he walks in, he does auto attacks to stay with him, uses his E, uses his Q, explodes with his W, and it starts adding up really, really quickly. He's a dive comp, so as the Punisher went in, he quickly jumped in as well. Made sure that he can get a lot of damage off. His W explodes. He gets an E going off. He gets some damage. So it's enough damage to finish off Muradin. He simply gives a shield to Maiev in case she wanted to go in a little bit further. But she's low on mana. So she didn't really want to go in anymore. And they decide to go up here. Maybe go for a kill. Possibly invade. But without Holy Ground, it's a little risky. And he did go with Law and Order. So, I've talked about this talent a couple times. What does Law and Order do? Law and Order makes it to where every time that you hit one enemy hero with a smite, it lowers the cooldown of your Righteousness by one second. Meaning, at most, you can drop it by five seconds. While Righteousness at lasts for four seconds, that means that you can have a shield on effectively 80% of the time. Then the next thing is that... With Righteousness, every time, or Law and Order, whenever you use Righteousness, every hero you hit will increase the damage of your smite by 25%. Meaning, in a situation like this, where he easily hits four heroes with his uh, Righteousness, he's going to follow up by 100% more damage with the smite. That's 500 damage. Okay? Well, Ethereal has 4,000 health. That means that you're effectively doing like an eighth of Ethereal's health with your E alone every six seconds, not to mention an extra five, sorry, an extra, what's the, where's the talent at? Uh, 300 damage from your W, your auto attacks hit for 135. So all in all, in quick burst in fights, you're doing about 1,000 damage every four seconds, and you get three or four more auto attacks, almost 1,500 damage. Every five seconds, right? And easily more than that if you're combining that with your Qs. So you're doing so much damage. This not only enables a dive comp because you're also getting shield after shield after shield on your team for 500 health shields over and over and over, but you're also doing a lot of damage, which means that you can dive onto like backliners like uh, Malfurion, Genji, Hanzos, and do a lot of damage to them. And you can see, he's just slowly dishing out damage to uh, to Murden. They clear this camp up. He doesn't even need to get another W off. He just walks away. We're going to speed up just a little bit. He decides to just simply soak. It looks like they're going for 16. You can see the Righteousness got value. And it allows... It's a level 7 talent that kind of allows Tyrael to have a little bit of wave clear early on. As well as if you get the level 16 talent, Burning Halo, that also gives you more wave clear. What that means is both Tyrael and Eldruins do 32 damage per second to nearby enemies. Which means that if you put yourself near your Q, you're doing 64 damage per second. Or you can increase this damage from Tyrael alone by 150%. And that's an increase of 150%, which means it's actually more like 2.5 times the damage. So... And that's if you use teleporting. So you want to get most of your value off of your Q before teleporting. And then you want to teleport and you'll be doing nearly 100 DPS. I mean, quite a bit of damage. So you have a fight going in here, a VP going off. But he already got his value off of his shield. You can see so much shielding's going out. There's no chance they're going to be able to kill anyone. And then when that ends, he could simply use a sanctification if he wants to. Or, if you saw, he got an E off on a, two people doing over 500 damage, as well as that lower the cooldown of his W, increasing the time that he's going to be able to do another W. You can see he just W'd himself in this case for the extra damage. He could have probably gone for a Q onto the Hanzo to do some more damage, maybe even go for a kill, but he decided not to. And again, pro players think differently than I do sometimes. As much as I might say one thing, that doesn't mean that they're wrong or I'm wrong. Just a different style of play. In this case, what he did was he jumped ahead towards them. And then he's probably going to use his E to give movement speed to his team. 
but he might save it just to get the extra stacks off. He did save it. So he got... He used it so he could get the lower cooldown on his W, and he W'd in case his team wanted to dive, which they decided, no, they don't want to dive, so he simply used a Q to go back. Remember that Tyrael's great at enabling dive comps. And I'm going to speed up, just because the objective is being picked up by Sonya, so it's kind of boring right now, um, as well as Junkrat took this camp. And I think that's a big thing that people don't understand, is on maps where the objective takes a long time, sometimes it's best to split up. Um, especially if one of the enemies is dead. In this case, they're all alive. It says that Hanzo's dead, but he's alive. Uh, it's just a bug for the replay. Um, but splitting up allows your team to get value in multiple areas, and sometimes people don't understand how strong that can be. Uh, in this case, like they were able to take two camps. They were able to push in multiple areas. They got the objective. They got a camp. Now they got another camp, and they got the, uh, the keep decent amount of damage. So... It's like you can play a lot safer and get a lot more value without needing to have five people all sit on an objective. All right. So again, he's just anchoring in bushes. He's making sure that he's in the middle of the enemy team and his team so that he has vision in case they try to flank his team. Especially since Maev isn't there, he doesn't want to try to engage. It's just simply getting vision. It's pretty obvious where the enemies are at. So they decide, hey, let's go up here and possibly push force them to do something, and we can get this camp in a minute. Uh, because we have the level lead, and now it's the same talent tier, but they still feel like they have the level lead. He anchored, but outside of a bush. This means that he still got vision when the enemies came in here, um, but he wasn't able to follow up with anything. Alright, so we're going to see maybe a fight up here. He gave movement speed to Maev so that she could get out alive, as well as he gave the uh, shield. And while the shield doesn't increase the damage of the movement speed, the if he lands the movement speed on anyone, um, it it still... I mean, the movement speed... Neither neither of these, with Law and, jo or law and Order, it, it doesn't help on the... Okay, so we've got a big fight coming in here. What's happening is he simply got his crit off there with his E, which lowered the cooldown of his W as he used his W first. And this lowered it by a couple seconds. And this E is so large that while it only hit this person this time, oftentimes you can hit people like in these areas as well just because it's such a large uh, AoE. Now he may drop a Sanctification here as really, I mean... The, it'll it'll cause the enemies to leave the fight. But instead, the Vorpal goes off first. We have a Alex Straza, who her ult's going off. A couple heals are going to happen. And the Maiev ult keeps Muradin in there for good. He's Sanctification so they don't die to the Hanzo. One more W could have killed him, which means that they wouldn't have been able to win the fight. So he did a quick Sanctification just so that they could survive this, as well as get healing from Alex Straza. And now he knows that he can give movement speed to his team and push in very quickly. Now's the time where pro players look to end the game. They just got two kills, um, or at least one kill right here on a main tank. They want to do something big. So he used his Q first, which is another trick that you can do with... It's not really a trick, but just good play sense, which is use your Q to get close to the enemies, then use your E to give yourself bonus movement speed so you can catch up to the enemies. This bonus movement speed allows them to get really close, as well as allows Maiev to get right on him. He gives a shield to Maiev, does some crit damage with his E, and finishes him off. It's quite a bit of damage. I want to show people something really quick again with the damage. Look at where, where Tyrael's sitting. He's above Sonya in hero damage and almost above Junkrat as well. And his shielding is almost 10,000 shielding. It's incredible the amount of value he's getting. He just popped ahead of Junkrat in damage. So you can see it's very, very valuable, um, the amount of damage that he can do. People really underestimate how much damage he actually does. Like, they think that Tyrael is just like a shield support tank, but he actually is a really strong diver that can do a lot of damage and still be able to peel for his team. But ultimately, he's enabling these dive comps, which are really popular in the meta right now. So level 20, he did end up going with de uh, Defense of the Angels, which gives him 40 armor, as well as it makes it to where each time that Righteousness Shield absorbs damage, its cooldown is reduced. Well, Righteousness Shield is an AoE shield that's going to be absorbing damage all the time, and it has a lower cooldown because of Law and Order, which means that he's going to have 40 armor quite a lot in this fight, as long as he keeps doing everything correctly. 
So getting this level 20 talent with this particular build is pretty much game over. He gets a quick shield on her, but sadly she gets taken out. And this game is ending. So hopefully you guys enjoyed and hopefully you learned a little bit about how to play Tyrael or at least how the pros play Tyrael. Now if you in particular are trying to play Tyrael, I do like this build on maps that don't have bosses. I like to get holy ground on maps with bosses as I feel that the, just the ability to defend your own boss is very important, but also to bait the enemy into leaving their boss. Say the enemies are five manning a boss and you walk up alone and then you simply just show your presence with a holy ground. Um, they might walk away from the boss because they're like, hey, we can't do this, they have holy ground. And they might leave even if you were alone. Now, I'm not telling you to go run up to bosses alone, but just utilize your, your um, tools you have. So I highly recommend trying out a few different builds on Tyrael and let me know in the comments below what you think. And again, what I said earlier about the uh, the sponsorships, I'd love to hear you guys' opinions. I don't want to be considered like a sellout, but at the same time, I'd like to keep the quality high on these. And they do take a lot of my time to make. So thank you all for watching. Toss comments below. Subscribe. Like. Like if you're on Facebook. I don't know. Whatever. Thank you very much.